Hello everybody and welcome to my April 22, April 2022 booktube reading wrap up. So I just have the book, the first one book to tell you about today. This is a car crash already. Dane reads. This is Hunters of Dune by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. So this book is interesting because it continues on the original Dune series after Chapter House Dune, which is when Frank Herbert died. And I didn't think much of Chapter House Dune, to be honest. This one was good. Uh, probably better than Chapter House Dune. I mean, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5, but it was a strong one. Um, the main character in this is one of the, like, goalers of Duncan Idaho, who is one of my favourite characters in the series anyway, so that helped. Uh, and there's just lots of intrigue in this. It feels, again, as though stuff's happening. My, my issue with Chapter House Dune, nothing happened. Like, the, so this is the difference between Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson versus the original Frank Herbert. Frank Herbert's were much more philosophical. These ones are much more, like, action adventures. So there's a place for both of them, I think, and actually they, but you know, both sets of them cross over into the other's preference. Like there's bits of philosophy in this, there's bits of action and adventure in uh, Herbert, Frank Herbert's original books. Um, but yeah, it just really got me excited to continue reading. So I already have the next book, uh, which is Sandworms of Dune, which comes after this. So this will be book seven in the original series. This is book eight. And then there are a few other ones that sort of sit alongside the original series as books like 2.5 and stuff. And then there is one final schools trilogy for me to read. And then that's it, I'll have read every June book. So that's not bad going, because I've only really been making serious progress on the series for the last six months or something like that. So happy days, 3.5 out of five. Hello everybody, Dane here. And uh, I have one book to wrap up for you, which is Sandworms of June. So this is the last book in the June series or the original June series or the Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson continuation of the original June series. Um, it was a pretty good ending. I gave it probably a, a week four out of five. Um, I like the way it all wrapped up at the end. There were some twists I didn't see coming to. And um, yeah, it's very like lovingly done. Uh, a bit of an ode towards the original Frank Herbert June books. Um, and basically this is book number eight. Uh, Frank only wrote six of them and the other two were done by Herbert and Anderson. And uh, yeah, did enjoy. There are some more June books. I think after this one I have five more June books to go, so looking forward to that. Hello everybody, I've just got two books to wrap up for you today. The first of them was my bedtime book, so it is Paperweight by Stephen Fry. It's basically a collection of essays, journalistic things that he wrote for newspapers and stuff. I gave it a two out of five, I didn't think it was very interesting, and it felt like it was trying to be funny, but it wasn't very funny. Um, there were a few bits in it that were okay, but overall it was just a slog to get through, very much a bedtime book. Uh, the highlight was probably uh, Stephen Fry's take on a Sherlock Holmes short story, which that was okay. Other than that, not so good to be honest. But um, yeah, anyway, I read it, it's ticked off, that's another Stephen Fry done. And then I read Paul of June. Um, so this book is by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson and it's sort of spaced between June and June Messiah. Um, it also goes back into Paul's childhood at times as well, so that's kind of interesting. Um, it was okay, it wasn't great, it wasn't terrible. I do think it would have worked better if the past bits and the present bits, as it were, had been two separate books rather than jumping backwards and forwards. But hey ho, uh, another one ticked off, 3.5 out of five. Got the Winds of June next and then only three more to go. All right, everybody, I've got two books to wrap up for you today. The first is The Magic Cottage by James Herbert. So this is a fairly generic haunted house story. Uh, James Herbert does it pretty well, but I mean, he's done better haunted house stories like The Haunting of Crickley Hall or The Secret of Crickley Hall or whatever it was called was a lot better than this one. This one is a little bit self-aware though. Um, it kind of plays with a few tropes and it, it knows that it's sort of poking fun, at, fun of itself at some times. Um, it was an okay storyline, basically, instead of a haunted mansion or whatever, it's a little old haunted cottage. Um, the main two characters in this, the main couple, the woman is an illustrator for children's books and the guy is a session musician. So I found that quite interesting because obviously I work in as a writer, but I'm also a musician, so there's kind of a little bit of overlap there. Um, all in all, it was just all right, 3.5 out of five. And then I read Sisterhood of June by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. So this is book one in the Schools of June trilogy. And it covers the origin of the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood. Although it's a bit like the like House Atreides and House Harkonnen and House Carino. Where they cover a lot more than just the house that's in the title. Um, which is good because although the Sisterhood is interesting, I don't always find them interesting to read about. Um, mainly because I tend to not like the Bene Gesserits as characters. They're just 
unlikable characters, like deliberately so. Um, but the fact that it covers a lot of other stuff, like Vorian Atreides has got kind of a main role in this. And we see what happens to him, even though he's about 250 years old by this point. And, um, yeah, because of that, it stopped it from being too boring or from focusing too much on an area that I wasn't too into. Overall, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5, but uh, we'll be continuing with the remaining two Schools of June books. And then there is just the Road to June left, and then I've read everything June. Very exciting. Alrighty, Rura guys, just got the one book to wrap up for you today, and that is Three Roads and Other Stories by Emma Timpany. This is published by Postbox Press. Cracking little short story collection, there are what, maybe a dozen? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 stories in this. Um, some shorter than others. I'm going to read you one very short one to give you a feel for whether you like it or not. Full review of this coming soon. I did give this 4 out of 5. Uh, and this is Tissue. This morning I was spring cleaning, wiping the muck off the inside of the windows with pieces of tissue paper gathered over time, from shoe boxes and packaging for example, for this purpose. I should explain that I've not been well, have lain for the last two months in bed looking at the dust gathering on the pane, at the line where the cat rubs her nose back and forth against the glass as her eyes rake the dark garden, at the small opaque impact marks insects leave behind them, at tiny green flowers of some algae or mould, and that fine dark black matter that dunes in the window's corners. As I wiped I saw a word printed slantwise on the paper, denser white on pale translucency, visible against the light. The word was poetry, over and over again, poetry, poetry, poetry. So yeah, did enjoy, and I will be chatting to Emma Timpany for my radio show sometime soon. Keep your eyes peeled for that. Hello everybody, just the one book up to, blah, 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 to wrap up for you today, and that is The Royal Book of Oz by Ruth Plumley Tompkinson. Tompkins? Ruth Plumley Thompson. So this is book number 15 in The Wizard of Oz. Um, the first 14 were all written by L. Frank Baum, and then he was so inconsiderate he went off and died. So this is the continuation of the series after his death, the first book in that kind of continuation. You can tell it wasn't L. Frank Baum who wrote it, but that's not necessarily a problem. Um, it does still stick fairly true to the Oz tropes that we kind of know and love. Um, I enjoyed it, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 and I thought it was a pretty good sign for what's to come. I'm just hoping that the series doesn't jump the shark later on, but so far out of this I thought it was alright. We follow the Scarecrow as he uncovers his family tree and um, discovers he's a king. There's a lot of that. A lot of characters just been like, oh yeah, by the way, you're a king. It's like, okay. I mean, I don't know if any of them have turned out to not be kings yet. Apart from the ones who were queens. I've just got two books to wrap up for you today. And one of them is Beneath My Cat here, so it's hard to get to, isn't it, Biggie? There we go. So I read Creed by James Herbert. Um, it wasn't very good. I gave this a three out of five. Um, it's basically about an unlikable main character. He is um, a paparazzi, so he, uh, or a paparazzo, I think is the singular. So he takes uh, photographs of celebrities for a living, basically. And um, yeah, then he starts to see some weird shit, and that's basically the plot of this one. There was, somebody had written, Biggie, you're getting right in the way. Let's put that back, shall we? Um, so he, somebody wrote a spoiler in this, which was kind of annoying as well. Um, and it very much divided people because I posted about it on social media and the people who don't read were like, that's hilarious. And the people who do read were like, that's awful. Why would somebody do that? I'm on the awful side. I mean, I don't really mind about spoilers, but writing a spoiler in a book, 100 pages before the end. There's only one reason to do that and that's to be an asshole. Like it's a bit different if you share a meme or something that spoils Game of Thrones for somebody. That's, you know, even then it kind of sucks. But it's not deliberate and malicious. Anyway, luckily I wasn't really enjoying the book anyway so I gave it a 3 out of 5. Full review coming soon. And then I read Moon by James Herbert which was a lot better. So this is about a guy who teaches computers basically. And this was written in like 1986. So because of that I found it fascinating because I really enjoy reading like older approaches to technology when the technology was just like starting out. So for example the character's talking about how he thinks that one day there'll be a computer in most households which is just funny to think about now. Um, there is some like, you know, mysticism and weird shit going on in this as well. Uh, it's not one of Herbert's most well-known books but I did think it was pretty good. It wasn't particularly scary. Um, but it was a well-told story, so there is that. Overall, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. Did enjoy.
Just the one book to wrap up for you today, and that is Cycle of the Werewolf by Stephen King, illustrations by Bernie Wrightson. Uh, it's a pretty short read. I read it in, in the space of like a couple of hours. You can see my copy is also falling apart, so I'm actually tempted to take some of the illustrations and frame them, because the illustrations really are beautiful. Um, but yeah, the story was okay. It's sort of uh, it's told in a series of 12 shorts, each of which takes place in a different month. Um, yeah, and it's about werewolves, and that's about all there is to say about it. It's pretty good, but, I mean, not worth going out of the way for it, and I, I'm not surprised it took me this long to get to it, to be honest. I can see why it's not, like, pretty widely distributed. But yeah, it was alright, 3.5 out of 5. Alright guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today, and that is Once by James Herbert. It has this cool thing where it's got a hole in the cover, and I, it's alright, I suppose. Um, this is basically his version of a really dark, kind of erotic fairy tale. There's lots of sex in this one, including like lesbian sex. Although it is kind of that thing where lesbian sex is used by the bad guy to corrupt one of the characters. And it's like, mate, you know? And this woman's like really feels bad for being a lesbian because she was also um, abused by a lesbian. So it's like, I don't know if that's a healthy message to be using. Uh, I'm also not a big fan of fairy tale stuff in general, so I mean, it was kind of okay. It worked all right in the context of the story. It was a bit like when Agatha Christie uses nursery rhymes, and you're just like, oh, all right then, Aggie, go on then. Um, but yeah, overall, it was okay. It was like a weak 3.5 out of 5. As I say, there were some bits I didn't like, but that was made up for by some of the plot work and the character work, which was pretty good. Um, I wouldn't particularly recommend it though because Herbert has so many other better books out there so make of that as you will. Alright that's your lot so as always thanks a lot for watching don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so what you thought of them hit that subscribe button for more and uh, I'll see you soon for another bookish video thanks a lot bye bye.